Okay, so today we're going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of February, and it's been it's been it's been a month of ups and downs. I can say that with confidence. Some books I've really enjoyed, some I've felt were fine, some I didn't like. So the first one is Undyne, which is a novella. It's just barely over a hundred pages. This is the book that. Uh, that inspired Hans Christian Andersen to write The Little Mermaid, or the novella that inspired Hans Christian Andersen to write the, the Little Mermaid. And it's one of the first, it's not actually a mermaid. She's a water spirit, if I'm remembering correctly, or a water sprite. I don't remember exactly what she was labeled in the novella. But anyway, she's not technically a mermaid, but it's credited as one of the first mermaid books. Anyway, I loved this story. It is exactly kind of what you would expect from something that's this old. A lot of older fairy t tales are uh, not logic-based. They're a bit nonsensical. They're a bit ridiculous. Characters oftentimes act in ways that it's just a drama. It's such a drama. This little novella is so full of extraness, and I love it. So Undyne was, so, uh, so these, pa these parents accidentally dropped their baby in the ocean, and they assumed the baby died. And then Undyne, which is a water spirit, came out of the ocean and they just kind of adopted her as their as their replacement daughter. And then this knight comes and stays with them and Undyne uh, wants to marry him in order to gain a soul because as a water spirit, she doesn't have a soul. And once she marries him, then she her personality changes because, you know, she has a soul now. And like I said, it's very dramatic. She has these powers where she can control the weather and she can control water. And there are some really cool scenes in this little, little story uh, showing her doing those things and... Um, I don't know how much, it's a hundred pages, so I probably don't need to tell you much, but I would like to tell you everything. She's afraid that he, I'm not gonna tell you everything. She's afraid that he's gonna leave her once he learns about her powers, but he promises not to. And then a whole bunch of drama ensues. And all I'll say is that I love, the, I love every part of the story, but the ending, really threw me over the edge because of, again, the drama, but then also because Undyne is the most dramatic and extra character in the world. And the way she responds to things that happen are, I mean, I want to be her. I want to be her level of crazy. I'm kidding, of course. I don't want to be. I do, though. She's so wild. I will say my big, big complaint about this is how dry the writing style is. I found this 100 pages laborious to get through despite enjoying every single development that happened on page. I did not like the way it was told. It felt so removed and it felt so boringly told even though everything that was happening was so exciting. This is one of the few things that I've, few stories that I've come out of and, and thought, I need to see a movie because I'd like to see this play out in an interesting way because the story itself is so dramatic. So I'm going to do some research. I'm going to look into uh, if there's been a really faithful adaptation because I would just love to see Undyne in action. And I just want to see that ending play out in all of the glory that it deserves. Next book I finished is Soulsmith, which is book two in the Cradle series. And I kind of have a similar feeling. I definitely enjoyed book two more than I enjoyed book one. So if, if you don't remember book one, this is a self-published, um, I guess it falls under the lit RPG category. Um, maybe it doesn't. I really don't know what I'm talking about, but this is a self-published story that's very, it feels, everybody says it feels very much like a video game or like a shonen manga. Um, it's this underdog character that uh, he's unsold, which the short version of explaining that is he doesn't have the magic of the world, but he's very tenacious. He fights hard and he finds ways around the system to be able to continue to pursue his future. It's it's a lot about like carving your own path and carving your own destiny. It's really fast paced. It's so fast paced. And I think that that's a big part of what I what isn't fully landing with me with this series. I definitely enjoyed book two a lot more. One of my complaints about book one was that I really just didn't feel attached to any character. I didn't feel like any character in book one was given any level of depth to make me connected with them 
at all. And book two, I feel very differently. I think that uh, Lyndon, who is our main character, I think that he's, I'm getting more and more interested in him all the time. Uh, one character that carried over from book one into book two, I adore her. And then there are two new characters that were introduced in book two that I also really, really love. So now I have several characters that I'm very attached to and that I enjoy following, which is a huge factor in my enjoyment as a reader. I'm definitely more of a character reader than I am a plot reader. The problem is that this this series is very plot. Um, I think my biggest complaint for these two books is how rapidly paced it is. Uh, for me, again, characters are a huge factor, but also exploring emotions and themes are a huge factor for me in how I enjoy my stories. And these books are so fast paced that I feel like we don't actually get any time to breathe or to unpack anything that happens. There's a lot of really traumatic and devastating things that happen in these books. There's a lot of really intense situations that the characters find themselves in. And then it feels like we're like, we're here, we do it, and then we move on and now we're doing this and now we're doing that and we're doing that and we're doing that and it's like we're constantly moving we're constantly going to the next action but then these one-liners are laid out of like i tried not to think about what i left behind and it's like hold on please please wait i would love to unpack that let's take a second to explore that let's, let's think on that a little bit but it's like that one line is all we get in exploring that and now we're on to the next thing and i understand that linden's life is rapidly paced at the moment so it's really reflective of him having to adapt and change constantly. But there are scenarios where that's not true. Like when he was learning to Soulsmith, which I feel isn't in a spoiler for book two because I, it's on the back description. When he was learning to Soulsmith, it, it is something that took place over time, yet we got like a paragraph of he struggled and then he learned and now he's starting to learn and now we're 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 getting a little bit closer to our goal. And it's not like, I don't want to misconstrue this. It's not like he didn't know something and then boom, he knows something. It's not that kind of flaw. He has to struggle for his knowledge, but that struggle is summarized so that we can get to the next action. And that's just not the way I read. That's just not the kind of story that I enjoy. So for me, I am enjoying reading these, but I'm also not motivated to continue with the series. I will continue because I've been told emphatically that book three is a huge step up from books one and two. Plus, it seems like based off of how book two ended, it seems like book three is going to feel more focused and less like we're jumping from thing to thing. So anyway, all this to say, this is a really popular series. A lot of people on booktube love it and I'm enjoying it, but I'm not loving it. If the books weren't so short, I wouldn't continue on, but because they're short, I'm gonna give it at least one more book and see how I feel after that and decide if this is the series for me or not. But I do wanna be really clear. This is an action-packed, fun, funny series that is a ton of fun to read. And if you enjoy video games and if you enjoy shonen manga um, and if you enjoy fast-paced, action-packed plots, it is a really good series. It's, I really don't have anything negative to say about it other than just it's not suiting me as a reader. So I don't wanna discourage people from reading it. I'm just talking about my experience reading it. Next book is The Invisible Library, which I actively didn't enjoy. I didn't dislike it. You're not gonna get a rant from me. Just kind of a quick, I didn't like this book. It's a really interesting concept. Uh, this librarian who is, she's like a protector of books. So she works in this invisible library and there are alternate dimensions that have these very rare copies of books. And she tries to hunt them down or tries to protect them. She works for this organization. It's a really interesting idea. And basically everything about this book is a really interesting idea, but I didn't enjoy reading any of it. And it's not because the writing was bad. It's mostly just, again, my preference as a reader. I don't like, I guess I, guess I didn't connect with our main character. There is a romance in this and it's very much one of like, we met a couple days ago, but I'm gonna make some really big decisions based on this crush that's a couple hours old. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't my thing at all, and it could have been my thing. They had some good chemistry, but it was too rapid, and it was also, um, there, there was some, there were, there were some writing choices. <laughs> 
that weren't for me. But also the world, it's a, it's a really cool idea, these different dimensions, and you can go to different timelines, and there's so much opportunity here, but it felt like everything was a mile wide and an inch deep, if that makes sense. It felt like, like for instance, they, there's vampires, there's werewolves, there's dragons, there's um, witches and wizards, and, and all these things are mentioned, but none of them are explored. So like, cool, are they blood-sucking killer vampires or do they sparkle in the sun? Do they chant and perform magic or do they have wands and they cast spells? Like, what are we talking about? What kind of creature, what there's, there's so many things about this world that are briefly mentioned and then never explored. And so I feel like I know nothing about this world, even though I just read an entire book taking place in this world and going to various various places within it. Same with the magic. There's so much happening with the magic and so many different type levels of magic, but I feel like I can't really wrap my head around any of it. And there were also a lot of character motivations and choices that I just, I did not understand why these choices were being made. So for me, just in general, it was a big swing and a miss. And I don't, I didn't hate it. I didn't, I did, I, like, it's not a rant. It's not like this close to okay, or Anne in the Fridge Kiss, or The Cursed Child. Like, there's so many books that I hate, and this isn't one of them, but it was just a miss on every single level for me, and I think it's all personal preference. Now let's talk about a book that I loved, The Trials of Morgan Crow, Nevermore. Oh my goodness, I read the first book of the Nevermore series and it has taken every single ounce of my self-restraint not to immediately dive into the next book, but I had some buddy reads that I had already organized with people and I had to, I had to be loyal. But I didn't want to be. This book is really popular here on booktube, so you probably already know about it, and I am so late to the train, but oh my goodness. This is a middle grade series, and it's super reminiscent of Harry Potter. In fact, especially in the beginning of the book, there are so many parallels to Harry Potter that you could easily say, okay, that scene is that scene, and that line is that line, and the setup is really similar, but not in a copy and paste way, more like in a tribute way is how it felt to me. So it was reminiscent, but it was still distinctly totally its own. But I do wanna throw that out there in case that would bother someone, in case anybody would read it and, and not appreciate the parallels but it is a, it's very distinctly its own. I wanna make that really, really clear. This world is magical. And, and our character, so she is, she's been, she's born on a particular day. Can't remember the name off the top of my head and I didn't bring the book here because I forgot that I was filming a wrap up today. I don't, it doesn't matter. She was born on a particular day, which means that she is cursed and everything that goes wrong, everybody blames her, it's always her fault. And she is destined to die on her 11th birthday. Might be 12th. I think it's 11th. She's destined to die on this day, but right before she dies, right before this whole thing happens, a man shows up, his name is Jupiter, and he's literally the best thing that's ever happened to me. He shows up and he tells her about Nevermore and he tells her about this opportunity and he whisks her away to this incredible, magical world. And one thing that I've said a couple times on my channel recently is that it just feels like middle grade captures the, the magic of soft magic systems, the feeling, that's what I want to say, middle grade captures the feeling of magic like most things don't. I mean, I read a ton of fantasy. I obviously love hard magic systems. I love complexities of magic. I love, I love really interesting magic systems, but the feeling of the magic of a new world and the feeling of the magic of reading a book, middle grade just seems to capture on a level that really resonates with me. And I don't read a lot of middle grade, but lately I've been really, really drawn to it because of this reason. I think that if Nevermore were to be picked up by a movie and adapted well into a movie, it would be our next Harry Potter. The way Harry Potter swept through everyone, the way it became so popular and so entrenched in, in, in culture and the way everybody knew the name, the way kids obsessed over it and read it and reread it and created friendships around it, Nevermore would be the next Harry Potter if it could be adapted well. I think it captures that same whimsy and wonder and excitement. And I think that the characters, not just, 
uh, Morrigan, not just our main character, but all the side characters. Jupiter is the best, but also Jack and Hawthorne and Fen everybody it like the world and the people and 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 the moments that are that hit so deep i have loved reading this book and i already bought book two we'll be reading it next month we'll be reading all of them i can't wait to read them to my kids i i mean i know i'm over hyping this and i'm so sorry for that but i'm just trying to be genuine in how much i enjoyed it not in in like a you know the lies of Locke lamora kind of way where I, it's just different. It's just different. If you typically take my recommendations and you know what kind of stories I tend to like, Nevermore's not like that. But it's so different from what I normally read and it hit me in the, I feel like I'm a kid again, exploring a world. It hit me there. It hit me as a child. And I loved it so much. Anyway, I'm recording this video a week early because apparently that's what I do with wrap-ups. So I'm, at, I'm not done reading this month. I have two books that I'm near finished with that, that I will talk to you about that need to be discussed in this video. And then one book that I'm about a third of the way through, I'm either gonna finish it or I'm going to quit it because I'm not enjoying it. So I will be back in a week, in about a second for you, to finish up this wrap-up. So, future Murphy. Hi, I'm outside in a tree, actually. You are in a tree because my office is still, you know, in the condition that it's in. Which, by the way, I started a second channel, Murphy Napier Vlogs. I am gonna start vlogging again over there, not here. So if you wish you saw more of my videos, if you wish I would go up from two videos a week to more, I am elsewhere. <laughs> so there'll still be two videos a week on this channel. And then I'll also have one video a week over there. Maybe every now and then I'll do more than one video a week. We'll see how busy I am. But also our ba my basement, our basement flooded. My office was down in the basement. So my office is a mess right now. If you want to see some vlog clips, that's, there's, there's a vlog on that channel with the stuff. I quit this book. I didn't like it. I got near half done with it and I just was not enjoying myself. So I gave up. I am a firm believer in quitting if you don't like what you're doing, bookwise. Kings of the Wild is the next book that I finished and I have mixed feelings on it, but mostly positive. So this is a D&D-esque uh, story. It follows a band of men, which by the way, there's tons of music references and stuff that all went over my head because I'm not a music buff. But anyway, a band of men who, uh, who once were these amazing guys who would go out and destroy creatures and save people and be heroes, but not quite heroes. I think the way Clay Cooper, Clay is our main character. I think the way he explained it at one point was we were monsters, but the kind of monsters that were necessary in order to protect people. So they're not good guys, but they have good hearts. Um, it's a group of men who are I think they're in their 40s now, maybe late 30s, I actually don't remember. And they're all done. The band is disbanded, they're not doing this anymore. Uh, but then one of the guy's daughter is captured and in danger and th there's not a lot of time and they get the band back together so that they can go and help her. One thing that I think this book does amazingly is every single one of these guys has a very distinct, unique and fun personality. I enjoyed being around all of them. Another really great thing that this book did was, uh, it's it's hard to explain. This is, this is like an adventure quest. So they're on a quest to go save Rose, the guy's daughter. Um, they're on a quest to go save her. And it's like your typical quest in that, you know, we journey a little, we face an obstacle, we, we defeat the obstacle, we journey a little, we face an obstacle, we defeat the obstacle and, and on and on we go. Um, but it's like with a bunch of D&D &D creatures and lots of action and littered with humor. And the humor is really great. It's pretty I laughed a lot in this, but also it's pretty emotional. Uh, there's a lot of scenes, especially in the beginning and the end, both really choked me up. Uh, but there's a lot of scenes where these characters, their loyalty and dedication to each other and the stuff that they go through, I actually really, really felt it, which I was surprised by with such a lighthearted tone to this story. The adventure quest, uh, lighthearted, fun, you know, not 
we face a lot of obstacles, but you know, we always get through it somehow. Uh, that's not my thing. And this is definitely a book where um, there's one chapter called Sheer Dumb Luck, I think. No, that's not what it's called. Uh, so dumb luck or something I don't remember what it's called and then there's also a line in the book where somebody says how did you survive that and the guy responds I really don't know somehow I did and both of those things describe this book quite well there's a lot of obstacles they face that I'm just like how are you gonna make it through that and then somehow they do you know it's like it the, the stakes don't really feel very strong in this book because it's so uh light-hearted and because they just always make it through sometimes by sheer dumb luck and that's not my thing, but the book also seemed to like lean into that. Where it was like, we all know we're just here to have fun. So, you know, that's what we're doing. So I don't really necessarily think that's a deficit to this book, more just that's the book's style and that's not my thing. But even though the adventure quest isn't my taste usually, uh, the lighthearted feel to fantasy isn't my taste usually, um, things just kind of working out for characters often more often than not I'm not saying it's always that way but more often than not isn't my thing usually all those things being true I still had a really good time with this book because the humor was great the emotions were amazing and it was just really unique it was just really really different so this is a crazy popular book um and I, I get it even though it's not my taste I really get it because even though it's not my thing I had a lot of fun reading it like I had a really good time Next book I finished this month was The Last Quintista, which is incredible. So the setup for this is that there's a meteor coming to the earth that's going to destroy the entire earth and the best and the brightest um, are being and the most important and their families are being taken um, on a rocket ship to uh, hopefully settle on another planet and be able to, to find civilization or to find a place to settle on another planet and be able to continue the human race but um the people that are in stasis there are people who are going to stay awake and watch them and make sure that the people in stasis will be able to make it there but things don't go quite right shockingly so our main character is the daughter of one of the best and the brightest or two of the best and the brightest and she is on the she's going in stasis with them but something goes wrong and i guess all all i'll say is that she is the last person once she wakes up once they all wake up she's the last person alive that has memories of earth still and that still has her stories um one big theme of this is trying to erase history and start new um trying to create uniformity for the sake of not having conflict anymore and the importance of uh keeping your history keeping your stories and the importance of stories to uh to your individual to the individuals and and the impact that they have on people and their lives and oh my goodness I loved this story so much it was so it was it's it's it's, it's a typical setup it's it's a, a setup like leaving earth going into stasis that we that I've read many times but it's so uniquely done and I'm so attached to the characters in this book it really didn't hold any punches. It was so emotional. It was gut punching and heartwarming and it did all the things I needed it to do. I am so satisfied with this book. This is one of the books that is in the vlog um, on my vlog channel. So if you wanna see more information on it, go check that out. Highly recommend this book. It is a middle grade, but it is, I say, but there's nothing, I, I love middle grade. I have a great time with middle grade, but if you are not one that reads much middle grade and you might be turned off by middle grade, it's so emotionally deep and the plot is really well done. There was one thing in particular that I was really holding out because I was like, oh no, this could be messy and it's not, it's done so well. <sighs> I'm really, really happy with this. Don't, don't, just check it out. Check it out if it sounds interesting to you. I loved this book. And the final book that I read this month is A History of Wild Places. So this book is about a forest of people that it's a community of people that live in the trees and they, uh, they can't leave because the trees have rot in them and the trees split open and the rot seeps out and if you pass the tree line if you go into the trees then you get infected with the rot and you die and if you go back into the community then you infect everybody in the community so it's this really guarded um 
uh, story. It has a very slow, it's a very slow story. It's not action packed, but it has this very creepy, uncomfortable feeling to it. Um, actually, if you've seen the movie, The Village, which is old, but yeah, I watch it once. It reminds me a lot of The Village. Uh, so that's, there you go. It's kind of an abstract reference, I guess. Maybe that's not helpful. Anyway, it also has this very, this feeling of like, I very much suspect the leaders of, of this community. Like, I don't trust you that you're telling us everything. I don't trust you that, like there's something going on that's sus. Uh, so I am loving this book at the point that I'm filming this wrap up. I haven't quite finished it yet, but um, my dad finished it and he loved it. And I have a feeling that I'm gonna be really, really happy with it. So I'll put it on the screen. Did I like it? Didn't I like it? There you go. Now you know. And if you want my final thoughts on it, sorry for plugging the vlog again, go check out the vlog. Cause I'll actually have it done in like a day or two and it'll be in that video. But this is a book that's not action packed. It's not thrilling, but it is a book that's very slow paced, very suspenseful, very mysterious. There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of suspicion happening. Uh, it's a very close knit community. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of like, we don't do that um, kind of vibes. And I'm loving it. It's really, it's, it reminds me of several different things, yet at the same time, it feels so refreshing, maybe just because I don't read a lot of books like this. But this is a book that I wasn't even keen to pick up, but I'm really, really glad I did. I'm really enjoying it. The writing is great. The suspense is there. Everything's going well. And I read the first two volumes of Hunter x Hunter this month, and I love it. <sighs> okay, I'm cold. That's all the things that you need to know about. Wrap up, done. Oh wait, that's all the things that you need to know about. Here's all the books that I read this month. I enjoyed all of them, right? Didn't really enjoy that one. Everything else I enjoyed. So check out some of them maybe. Chat with me more about it in the comments. Let me know if you plan on reading any of them or if you have, let me know what your thoughts on them are. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday and vlog videos sometimes too. I haven't decided it'll be upload day for that because you know, just started it. Bye.